It's that time of year again, the time when we prepare for Gen Con for 2019. This is the biggest gaming event in the United States, some might argue in the world, certainly the biggest one that we get to attend mm -hmm. each year. And we're very excited about it. There's going to be a ton of brand new games uh, announced there, revealed there, games to play as demos, games for sale, games to play in tournaments, all kinds of things going on. And in this video, we are going to run down our preview of some of the biggest types titles that are being debuted or maybe are just being showcased at Gen Con this year. Uh, we can't cover all of them. That's right. There are <laughs> so many games, including a lot of uh, Kickstarters that we've chosen as Kickstarter Pickstarters. We've tried our best to narrow it down, and there's some things that we had to cut off that even we were still interested in, but you don't want to be listening to us into Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, we're going to try to keep it as brief as we possibly can. That being said, Buckle in, because <laughs> there's a whole bunch. We're going alphabetical by publisher. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, start us off. Yeah, so that means we're going with A, and of course that means AEG. They're pretty high up there. They're probably always going to be near the top of the alphabetical class. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing you and can say about them. We've got Ecos, which I believe we talked about already. They announced it a little while back with their Painter game, which already has come out. But this one is called Ecos First Continent. You're pretty much making an environment, trying to get animals to, that thrive there. But you've also got a new Smash Up expansion, Smash Up World Tour Culture Shock. If you are going, don't forget, if you got the previous Smash Up expansion, bring your little badge, because I th believe they'll have little goodies there for you. And there's Edge of Darkness. Uh, you can buy the basic edition for that. Yeah, maybe if you pack the Kickstarter, you might be able to pick up it there as well. The other small thing I want to bring up is you can pre-order some of this stuff from their site. That including a Smash Up Penguins thing. I think it's a go along with the sheep sort of standalone jokey thing. I, of course, picked that up because penguins are adorable. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't want that? Uh, so they have a few other games also that are uh, interesting. Like I said, we can't cover all of them, but... Uh, There's too much! Lots of cool stuff coming uh, from AEG. Definitely looking at Ecos. And Edge of Darkness, we've been talking about for a long time, was on Kickstarter, but it will be for sale there for the common folk mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this year. Arcane Wonders will be there with two brand new games. Uh, the first one being Dragon Scales. This is from designer Richard Lanius. It is uh, a competitive game which players are kind of playing as bad guys, uh, going for treasures stolen from a dragon's horde, and hopefully killing the dragon itself. Uh, so you're going to be backstabbing, do what's yeah, evil deeds there. Yeah, it sounds like you could kill the dragon or <laughs> let the dragon kill everyone else. <laughs> yeah, you know, depending on what suits your, your mood. Uh, and then another one they've got is Foundations of Rome. This one's actually coming to Kickstarter later this year. This is from the same designer as uh, the Century Games, among some other mm. big titles. So uh, pretty good uh, pedigree there. And it's a city-building game in ancient Rome, which is, you know... We've seen a lot of those, but it has these crazy looking miniatures for all the buildings. So I think like the the background of the designer and the detail of these minis and how, you know, the level of sophistication of the 3D models they have makes this one seem really interesting to me. It does sound cool. I didn't hear about this until now, but I just imagine a big box like Cthulhu War size because <laughs> all the miniatures, but in the end you just have a little game mat this big it's just because they fit all the miniatures in. I, yeah, it could be. I don't know how big exactly it's going to be. We'll see for ourselves when we get there. <laughs> but next up, we have Ares Games. We're bringing this one up pretty much for one game only, and that's Battlestar Galactica, the Starship Battles. This is pretty much like X-Wing. I think we talked about it, was it last Gen Con? Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. We got to see it out, and it has, it's similar, but it has a new, uh, well, not maneuver, uh, momentum is the word I'm looking for with ships. So you can actually have them sort of flying backwards and stuff <laughs> right, while still right. shooting. And they have a whole bunch of packs released for all the different characters and their unique ships. So if you're into more of that Mincher's table combat, especially uh, space, uh, like dogfighting in space, this is definitely one to take a look at. Uh, Bezier Games, of course, is going to be there. Uh, I think their biggest debut is one that they've announced previously. It's called Silver, and they also have a companion game for it, Silver Bullet, which won't be available at retail until later in the year. Uh, this is kind of a, a trick-taking game, which players are doing a little bit of bluffing, uh, trying to figure out what cards they have or their opponents have, trying to get lower numbers on those cards. Uh, we did a preview video for it. We actually have a prototype copy that we've been playing around with ourselves and having fun with 
with. And uh, there's an app that's free right now. They put the game out as an app. So if you want to try it, and if you can't go to Gen Con, this is your chance. It's free, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what device you have. Uh, they've also got the Suburbia Collector's Edition, which is on Kickstarter. That's the classic Suburbia game, but with all the expansions and upgraded components and some crazy new tweaks and stuff that right. look pretty cool. Uh, so uh, some cool stuff coming out of Bezier as usual. This next one's a little bit weird, but we thought we had to mention it. From Big G Creative, we've got Kenny G keeping it sexy. This is a cooperative game when you are all working together to keep Kenny G cool and sexy. Uh, you'll have to go through uncomfortable and weird events, and you'll be using saxophone cards, I think, and other weird things to keep them cool and uh, to get through the events. It's weird, and I at least want to see what the hell's going on. Why not? It sounds like a good companion piece to the Bob Ross uh, game, you know? Can we, <laughs> we get more games about these weird, like, memefied <laughs> celebrities? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Blue Orange is there with a bunch of games. Uh, we also just talked about these recently in a, mm -hmm. a video when they announced them, but they've got Detective Club, which is sort of this uh, Dixit-esque game where you're trying to figure out, interpret cards in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, Dragon Dragon Market, Pappy Winchester, and King Domino Duel. Uh, like I said, I, I would recommend watching a, a previous video on our channel, put a link to find out more about these. But of the four, I think uh, you know Detective Club is the one probably we're most interested in, along mm -hmm. with King Domino Duel, because we like the original King Domino. That's the roll and write version. Yeah, definitely Domino. Detective Club is, uh, I mean, if I recall in the video, that was the one I thought. But that's because it's been a while since we played Dixon. I've usually enjoyed our time with that. We like that style of game, yeah. But moving on, Board and Dice have a new game as well as an expansion to a very popular one. We have Sierra West, which is a game all about expanding into the West. And it's all about collecting different resources. And similar to the other hot game, I'm going to apologize in advance for mispronouncing, but Tale to Hawken. It's very modular. It's pretty good, uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, using res gaining different resources, but you can mo uh, different modular boards, so get, uh, making sure you survive the Oregon Trail, or I don't think it's exactly the Oregon Trail, but that <laughs> trip over. The other one being Teotihuacan Late Pre-Classic Period, I think it is. It's an expansion for the game, and this is, I think, one of the hottest things from the list we were, big list we were looking at, I think in the top three. It, it adds a new modular board, as well as a whole new temple, for uh, you to climb. I'm really excited for it because I do think, I, well, I wasn't a fan of Soma, which I'm the only person who wasn't. <laughs> uh, the game itself, I thought, was a fantastic Euro-style game. So just to add more modular boards that, that you can just add or remove, I think sounds really cool. Yeah, that should be a big one. Definitely looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Brotherwise Games has a couple of expansions for some of their own. Uh, the first one is Unearth the Lost Tribe, an expansion for the game on Earth, uh, and they also have Call to Adventure, Name of the Wind, uh, and this one is obviously an expansion for Call to Adventure, but <laughs> it's it's based on a book series, so the original Call to Adventure, not based on a book series. Mm -hmm. This expansion is based on a book series, and you can mix these cards in to also mix Curious. them Curious. Uh, I wonder if that's going to be the thing with future expansions like, I from think, the series. Yeah, it sounds, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm, take that's one I'm curious about, because I know Call to Adventure, a lot of people have been talking about it, and we put our review for it. We were a bit lukewarm, I guess, to mm -hmm. say, but we both also felt like an expansion could fix a lot of the issues, so I really want to see what this expansion has in store. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Calliope Games actually has a bunch of games we saw before, I think, at our previous PAX Unplugged, but now you have the chance to demo yourselves. So we have the new Suro Phoenix Rising. This was actually on Kickstarter a little while back. Uh, it's like Suro, but has a new twist on it with uh, capturing lanterns and stars, the Phoenix. We enjoyed our playthrough of it. But there's two other games, Spy Master, when you're all secret spy organizations trying to give out secret briefings and gather the most points in a certain number of rounds. And then Ship Shape, which I really like because it's about gathering, you're like pirates gathering resources, but the way you gather resources into your hole is you actually lay down these tiles and they can cover up other tiles or show things. So it's not simply just gaining the resources, also how do you organize them into your hole, so to speak, to see if you can get the most points. Yeah, no, that was, those are some very cool looking games. There was also um, Everybody Loves a Parade was another one. Mm -hmm. Games that we we had seen, like you said, last year, but now they're all actually going to be for sale, so it's exciting that they'll, they'll be out there. Uh, Catan Studio has a brand new Catan game, kind of. Uh, <laughs> Catan Starfarers. So there was a game, Starfarers of Catan, uh, which was released way back in 99, and they are now finally bringing it back, uh, reprinting it, but 
not just the same as it was. They've streamlined stuff. They've added rules. It now has a uh, fully modular board, kind of more in line with some other Catan games. A lot of people are excited for this. Um, not one that I've ever tried out, but Catan sci-fi version, you know, that's what's not to like. That's, that's, an, that's an easy uh, uh, pleaser for the whole family. <laughs> now for a heavy hitter, Come On Games. You might know them by a couple other names. seem to change every other year. First off, we have the God of War card game. This is going to be a big one. We talked about it in a video. We didn't know much then. They're not selling it, but I'm pretty sure it's up for demo. I'm sure we're going to do our best to try and sit down and get a chance to play that. Oh, yeah. We've also got a bunch of Zombicide stuff. We have Zombicide Invader. This is the space one. So instead of fighting zombies, they're Xenos, I believe, correct? If I return the number correctly and if I could speak. But that would be probably very interesting in the Zombicide series. But the other one is Teburu which is, we're going to have a video on it a little bit later, I think, than this one. We'll see. But it's pretty much, they're going to design this whole bunch of new games, and they have a new Zombicide in particular for this demo. And what it is is pretty much a digital play mat and also like chips and dice and the bases of miniatures. So when you use your phone and also like an iPad, it would actually know you moved your piece here, you know you rolled a six to really make, really integrate the board game and digital scene. So this is something we're really curious to see how it works is we were we saw this we're like oh we're how of this work will it be something that everyone adopts it'd be just uh, come on like we're definitely yeah. it's very weird definitely check out our video to, later in the week to see that but uh really want to see how it actually looks in person mm -hmm. uh cryptozoic is going to be there they've got just a couple of uh big new releases uh first it's the dc deck building game rebirth which has been kind of in the works for a long time <laughs> uh finally being released at gen con this is of course part of the dc deck building lime uh, adds some various new things to it though it's actually got scenario based so different scenarios may have different rules you can play it cooperatively or competitively uh, and then they also have epic spell wars of the battle wizards annihilageddon uh, which is using the epic spell wars property but has the base of that deck building engine uh, the cerberus engine yeah that is correct so uh, i was yeah. i remember when i first saw it, i was like which game does this belong to? <laughs> it's a little confusing at this but point. <laughs> that was one I actually have pre-ordered already because I have all the Cerberus stuff. And as for Rebirth, we may have a little bit more on that uh, later in the weeks leading up to Gen... Or the days, I guess I should say at this point, <laughs> leading up to Gen Con. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, it reminds me more of the Attack on Titan with a board. And this is... I just found out that there is going to be a tournament kit they give to stores, which actually come with a playmat for Rebirth. So if you really like a playmat for that, because it does play significantly differently than the uh, regular version, then that's something you should look at your local game store. Cool. Check that out. Yeah. So from Czech games, though, we have a bunch of... The first one is Letter Jam. I don't know how to describe this besides, like, Scrabble Me Tanabi. Because you're working out, you're work together to make words, but you really can't see your own letters. So that sounds like a very interesting game, especially one to play with Jonathan as he just scratches his head furiously as Ivan and I can't spell the words he's trying to get us to spell. <laughs> oh boy, that's going to be a disaster. Yeah, oh yeah. So, but then there's Sanctum. This is one I think we talked about before. It's based on those heavy, I think, Diablo-like games, those heavy dungeon crawls. It is competitive. It has some really cool-looking minis. Then we have an expansion for Through the Ages. It's titled New Leaders and Wonders. And from what I can tell, it just adds some new le Leaders and Wonders. Like nothing, I think, significant. Mm. But still, I think uh, Through the Ages has been considered very popular and one that I haven't had played, but I am very curious to get my hands on and try. Yeah, uh, Letter Jam is definitely one I'm looking at because Czech Games usually does very well with these light words. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I don't think we've ever been disappointed by their games. Yeah, and Sanctum as well looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, have, they always have a good lineup. Uh, Daily Magic is going to be there uh, with a couple of things that are of recently on Kickstarter, first being Margraves of Valeria, the newest entry in the Valeria series. So if you did back the Kickstarter or did you can give it a try in person here. You can also watch our video. Yeah, we did a preview for it. You're probably uh, going to hear that a uh, few more times. <laughs> you might. You can catch up on Days of Wonder as well. I'm assuming they'll be in the Asmo Day sort of booth, the whole central area. I'm surprised they haven't taken over everything yet. <laughs> we've got Cornith. We've talked about this before. It's a roll and write based on the Roman city of the same name. 
We've also got Ticket to Ride London. This is like the New York one. It's designed to be a lot quicker, except this time it's in London. I assume this will be outside of Gen Con, more of like a Target Walmart kind of exclusive. I can't remember if it, they actually announced if it is. I th- it seems like they did, <laughs> if I recall correctly, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, a couple of definitely some interesting ones there. Uh, speaking of Roll and Rights, Deepwater Games is going to be there with even more. Uh, first, of course, they've got a bunch of new things for Welcome to. Uh, multiple different like packs with different types of maps. Yeah, there's like seven or eight, but they're pretty much all the same thing of like a map with the theme. I think one's like Zombies, post-apocalyptic, winter, summer, more of just, I think, flavor, but they all come with, I think, three scoring cards each to spice up your game. Yeah, so there's a little something new in there mm-hmm. for you. They also have a brand new one called Floor Plan, a roll and write game in which players are creating the blueprints of a house, and then whoever has the most points is the one who the buyer decided to go with that design. And from the looks of it, based on how much we liked Welcome to, mm-hmm. it seems really fun, and like it looks like you really are drawing out what looks like the blueprints of a house, so I'm... I I think it'll be really cool to come up with some interesting, weird designs, possibly, of uh, room layouts. Now, next one is from Direwolf Digital. And they've only got one thing we were going to say, but the truth is they've got their fingers in a bunch of other things that I think are going to be under different companies. But this one is Eternals Chronicles of the Throne. I know they have a digital card game, but this seems like a physical deck-building version uh, that's out to try. I'm always up for deck-building games, so I'm definitely gonna check it out and direwolf has done great games too in particular deck building with uh, like clank so definitely you got a pedigree at least somewhat behind them yeah it'll be interesting to see you know for once the translation from a digital game to physical <laughs> instead of the other way around um Eggard Spiele has a brand new one called era medieval age uh which is kind of like it looks like a spiritual successor to roll through the ages they are calling this a roll and build game so it's kind of like a roll and write you're building your own little city but uh instead of writing like i said you're building so this is another one that has minis of little buildings and you're going to be placing them onto a little square that you have so interesting new concept and we'll see how it works kind of you know kind of looks like a tiny town sort of thing Mm -hmm. but uh more roll and righty than that i I do like how everyone's like oh it's rolling right but we're rolling cut we're rolling build (laughs) yeah yeah completely different what will be next uh speculate (laughs) Uh, well we're gonna move on to a favorite game company of ours Everything Epic Games. They're going to have Grindhouse there, which was a Kickstarter, but they'll have it for sale. If you don't know, this is pretty much you and your compatriots go into a, a haunted house and see it almost saw like, and you may lose some limbs and die. But if you die, it's not kicked out of the game. You actually get to uh, then mess with everyone else. So that's always fun. <laughs> but the other thing is Secrets of the Lost Station. This is actually their sci fi and story connected version of Secrets of the Lost Tomb. That, I think, is only going to be for demoing, unfortunately, but you can check it out. Maybe they'll get some advanced copies there. I'm very excited for both. I think Grindhouse should be coming in the mail. I'm very Mm. excited for that because it definitely seems something for both of us to have fun. I remember when we had that as a pick starter. Yeah, always excited to see new Everything Epic stuff. And, of course, I've loved their secrets. It's the exploring and story. (laughs) Yeah. With lots of minis. (laughs) Uh, Fowers Games has a new one from Tim Fowers. It's called Sabotage, uh, which I believe was also a Kickstarter. Uh, But uh, this is an interesting one. If you haven't heard of it, it's played with two teams and it's sort of like a, a hidden movement uh, almost battleship style thing where uh, the one team is trying to discover where the team of spies are moving to uh, but what's neat about it is it has a similar setup to a game like Captain Sonar with a big divider in the middle mm-hmm. but instead of coming with a divider the box actually opens up and becomes the divider <laughs> so everything's included for you there uh, but t- Tim Fowers has put out all kinds of great games so I think whenever he has a new one to check out it's always something to worth looking at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Greater Than Games will be there with not only some new games for you to possibly buy or demo, but also some expansions for some classic favorites. We've got Home Brewers. This is actually about uh, brewing alcohol, beers in particular, and of course, trading resources and going through different seasons to make sure you are the most prestigious home brewer. I don't think that's the word they use, but we'll go with it. We have Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which is I've been, I, we have a video from, a, I think, at least a year back. Uh, but I think this is the first time I'll have it to demo, like in more final production. It is a heavy, more story-based game. Like, we, you can watch our video on it. Like, there's actually envelopes that open if you do this or if you find the end of this. So it's one of those things if you like sort of not knowing what's going on until you hit the certain point. They've also got Medium, which I'm really curious about because I 
judging by the way it sounds, this could be uh, have a lot of people hyped about it, like the mind. Because the mind, as you know, if you don't know, was very popular, won a bunch of awards, and was about sort of syncing with the fellow players to play numbered cards. In this one, you and your partner or partners are going to put down words, and then you all will have to count down like three, two, one, and try to say a word that connects them all. So it's about uh, trying to sync together and think what you'd all say together, which could either be great, and I have a feeling sandwich will often be a connecting word, <laughs> but it could be really hard to try to connect new people. I'm really curious to see how that turns out. Then, of course, Spirit Island has an expansion, Jagged Earth. This was a Kickstarter. Honestly, you're going to hear us say <laughs> Kickstarter a lot. I backed it uh, for the very popular game Spirit Island. It comes with, of course, some new enemies, but some new spirits to help you in combating them. Yeah, very interested to try media. We're definitely going to get to demo that one while we're there. Uh, Gray Fox Games is releasing an interesting one. It's Run, Fight, or Die Reloaded. So Run, Fight, or Die is a zombie fighting game that came out uh, a few years back, and I remember it became pretty hard to find. It went out of print, and now they are bringing it back. This is the reloaded version. They've streamlined a bunch of things, tweaked some of the rules, uh, you know, made improvements here and there. So from the sounds of it, if you're a fan of that game, or if you didn't get the chance to try it, this will be a version that you want to pick up. IDW Games has two pretty big properties turned into games. We have Ghostbusters Blackout, which is all about how the Ghostbusters has to recatch all the ghosts that were released because of a major blackout in New York City. Apparently, they are basing off hit the historical events of the recent blackouts that just happened. <laughs> but we've also got Metal Gear Solid, the board game. We actually saw a, a banner for this back at PAX Unplugged, but this, hopefully, they'll now demo a bit more. I think there's a picture of the minis and stuff. I'm Board Game Geek, but you are working together, playing as the characters from Metal Gear Solid, in order to uh, complete certain tasks and goals. I'm really curious about that one, because big fan of Metal Gear Solid, especially since now that uh, it's it's sort of done, I guess. <laughs> right, it's, it's gone. <laughs> in the video game world. Yes, in the video game world. <laughs> yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah, definitely excited about that one. And the Ghostbuster one, curious how it works. Uh, we were not fans of the Cryptozoic one, so maybe this one will, I think, uh, maybe it'll do better for what we want from Ghostbusters. I think there should be a little promo thing of the new Transformers Ghostbuster car that they just released, <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> yes, it is. Our, <laughs> our indie boards and cards uh, is going to be there as well. Uh, they've got a brand new expansion for Eon's End, the New Age. Uh, this one kind of has uh, campaign elements to it. So if you want to do an Eon's End style campaign for that deck building game, but you don't want to do the legacy version, uh, you can use this and add it into your previously existing sets of the game. Maybe you've been scared off by watching us play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which uh, we will continue to do. Stay tuned. Uh, there's also Among Thieves, uh, which is another one of these uh, bluffing games from Indie Boards and Cards then, that I just thought I'm interested in because they, uh, you know, I feel like they're most famous in my mind or I was introduced to them through the Resistance and anytime they have one of these kind of new games that has some element of uh, like a hidden traitor or secrets and stuff like that, I'm interested in it. Jonathan likes lying. Yeah, and then, you know, and they uh, they do a good job with those. They also have another one called the Sherlock Files Elementary Entries, uh, which uh, is an interesting one. It's from what I can tell, it's a collection of three different cases that were previously separately re separately released. But I think this is the first time they're being put out in English, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, basically a puzzle solving game. It's cooperative. Uh, it's based on Sherlock Holmes, and you're trying to solve these cases uh, through a series of cards and puzzles and things. Yeah, I looked at that and at first I'm like, another Sherlock game? And then, of course, another part of me is like, you know you want it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe you do. <laughs> well, moving forward, we've got Colossal Games. They have they had a little bit of a Kickstarter fi uh, fiasco uh, earlier, but I think it's been all sorted out, which is good. And I don't think it's because anyone lost anything. It was just too many Kickstarters running, and I think they were worried. But right. they will have Mezzo there, uh, I think just a demo. I did back this one for their special... Uh, I guess you'd call it like a, uh, not deluxe. It's the opposite of deluxe. <laughs> the the bare bones. The version? bare bones version where they replace like the the miniatures with wooden meeples because I'm like it's less, <laughs> and I don't have to feel bad for painting not painting things. <laughs> but they've also got Terrors of London, which is a deck building game where you actually are trying to build like uh, the hordes of monsters and horrors and be the the worst uh, overlord in London and take control of the night. 
which sounds awesome to me. I enjoy monsters more than people. <laughs> yeah, I like the I like seeing that theme and then realizing it's just like a twenty dollar deck building game and not a mm-hmm. giant mini fest. Mm-hmm. That's a little refreshing. Cosmos has some stuff that I'm very interested in. Uh, first and foremost is this new series called Adventure Games. If you're familiar with the Exit line, uh, those are escape rooms that are cooperative in a box. You're solving puzzles. Sometimes you have to um, alter the cards. You might have to cut things or write on things. This is basically the same idea as those, but with a more storytelling focus, and it's fully cooperative again, But there, and there's no time limit. So uh, still kind of using the same kind of puzzles, but maybe you actually have characters, you're moving around more, you're reading more story elements, and they did say you won't be uh, writing on anything or anything this time. It's fully replayable, too. So it sounds like they're taking a lot of the things we like about Exit, but leaning on more of the things that I like about other games, like I said, the storytelling aspect. So I'm excited about that series. And they have another one I wanted to mention called Brain Waves. Also has three new, three entries in it. Right, all like new- one's a goose, one's a whale. And <laughs> one's a boar. Boar, yeah. <laughs> um, and they sounded interesting. I'm not sure if they'll be, like, gamer games, but they kind of sound like Brain Age style. Uh, cool. Yeah, like, maybe it'll be good for kids. But might also be interesting. They're kind of like brain activities, right. memory stuff. I'm I'm also excited about the adventure games, probably because um, I don't know if you actually remember this one. I think it was an exit room in a cabin was the theme. Uh-huh. And I was like, they were getting a message from like, I've locked you in this cabin. Let's see if you can escape. And once you escape the end, he's like, I can't wait to see you next time or something like that. It's just <laughs> like a hook, but you know nothing's really happening. And this could ha- you actually take that and carry them through, which yeah. would be a bit more cooler. Yeah, definitely. But... We also have a, I think, one of our old favorites because of um, an old game. Evolution. Game. Yes, not Evolution, but I was thinking of the... <laughs> Wits and Wagers. Yes, Wits and Wagers from North Star <laughs> Games. They will have the new Evolution there, which is actually called Oceans. Uh, this is the one that's based off sea, and it's also streamlined a little, pun sort of attended. These games have some of the best art, I think, when it comes to animal stuff. There's a reason why I think some of the pledge levels and extras were just pictures, you know, the prints that sold out. Mm-hmm. But they've got some other stuff, too, of course. They've got the Quacks of Quendelberg, uh, the Herb Witches. Maybe I'm saying that right. But it adds, I think, a fifth player for want to tell. And, of course, the Herb Witches to help spice up and change around the game. We also have a new game, but from the same designer of the Quacks of Quendelberg, titled The Taverns of Typhenthal. I think I'm saying that right. Once again always mispronouncing things it's what i can do but this game is all about running a tavern and trying to have it grow so maybe you want to hire get new people in who are you know have more money but you also want to you know have your locals around too so it's this nice balance of trying to grow your tavern but keeping the the right people in there too so it sounds pretty interesting i mean any of these games that when you build up something I think sounds right. pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what game uh, the, that designer comes up with next that we can't pronounce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of his MO. That's uh, literally all he thinks. He's like, how can I make Willie's tongue tie? <laughs> uh, Pandasaurus Games is also going to be there. They've got Dead Man's Cabal, which we've been following for a while now. It's a game about necromancers. You're trying to take different types of actions to collect parts and create life from the dead. <laughs> New friends. You're yeah. lonely necromancers, and you're like, I'm going to make the coolest friend. <laughs> uh, very good. But the other big one is Machi Koro Legacy. Mm-hmm. Of course, the legacy version of Machi Koro, uh, which is, you know, maybe the, as far as I know, the only big legacy release this year. So at least it has that. It's not competing with 40 other ones. Uh, oh, you didn't hear. They just announced the next <laughs> pandemic legacy. I mean, I mean, announced. <laughs> we, we know that's coming too at some point. But yeah, there's, uh, so that'll be, I don't know how that's going to work or how well it will work. But people love Machi Koro, so that, that could, that's something to look out for. Pod Hat Games has a couple of things that we talked about and a couple of things, at least they're new to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got the Abomination game, the Era of Frankenstein. Oh, another we, body resurrecting yeah. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this time you are playing as there and you're trying to collect the bodies and assemble them. I think we talked about this a little more with the other one, which is Aftermath. This is like Mice and Mystics, but instead you are in sort of, it looks like a post-apocalyptic future where humans just disappeared. I don't know if you're actually going to find out why, but it does look really cool. And now this next one, I'm a little curious if you know more about. It's called Battlelands, and they'll have it there. But it's called it's specifically called Battlelands Aftermath Edition. It's like a, a quick combat game, but the way it sounds as if 
they're going to have like Battlelands, Dead of Winter Edition, Battlelands, this. So I don't know if you know anything about uh, that. That could be cool. I haven't heard if they have specifically other plans for games like that, but uh, I imagine if this one does well, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be really, that would be pretty neat because they do have some cool properties. Oh, yeah. we've. I think we talked about that back when they ended uh, Rise of the Phoenix Born. Right, right. Yeah, they have some good stuff. But this last one, I think, is just a door one. It sounds like something up your alley. <laughs> yeah. And that's Quirky Circuits. Yeah, you are working together to program uh, robots, but you don't know what other people are playing, and you don't want to run out of battery power too. So it looks like you're also it looks like you're programming a room a Roomba, sorry, with a cat <laughs> on it. I mean, I know you're a huge fan of Space Alert. I think it's definitely probably on the higher end of your board of board games of all time. Yeah, yeah, that's and probably. This just true. sounds like a funny cat related <laughs> version. So yeah, and it's a Nikki Valens d- design, mm-hmm. so that's that's really big. And like you said, the art is cute. <laughs> but the question is, can you look? out the window. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. Uh, Plan B Games is going to be there uh, with a couple of their brand new Century titles. They've got Century A New World, which is the third and they say final entry in the Century series The uh, officially, uh, perhaps not including things like Century Golem Edition Eastern Mountains expansion. Uh, and uh, of course these are, once again, compatible. You can mix mm-hmm. and match these with all the other Century games. Right, because the thing is the initial Century was supposed to be a trilogy that's the first one a new world being the last one that set they made a century golem which was a cartoony with golem version of the first century which everyone really liked a lot so they finally like uh, you know yeah we'll make the golems of the other one so this is the <laughs> second one the eastern mountains people like golems mm-hmm. <laughs> give us the golems <laughs> but portal games a big favorite of ours also has a lot of stuff two of them imperial seller related we have imperial settlers empires of the north this is not actually an expansion Though it shares a lot of elements from what we read. It's a base game where you're up north, so you have like Vikings, I think the Scottish and uh, Eskimos, if I recall correctly, and you're competing there. The other one is a roll and write, being Imperial Settlers roll and write. Uh, that one uh, uses a roll and write system to build your empires and stuff. We've also got Monolith Arena Academics. This is a new expansion for the Monolith Arena game, adds, of course, some new pieces and stuff. But I think that we've been talking still the Imperial Settlers where we've been really curious to see how actually different it is mm-hmm. compared to the base game stuff that we've seen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out, you know, it's always a struggle. Like what's even now between Imperial Settlers, 51st State, and now Empires of the North, it's like, do you need to own all of them? How different enough are they? Um, so very exciting. They also, you know, I don't know if it's officially coming out or not, but I'm hoping they show the... Uh, the big empty box to hold all the Imperial Settlers stuff. Does it actually hold the North too? No, I don't oh, think it's okay. Empire. It's so it's just for the core. Imperial. Unless there's extra room for future expansions, you can throw it in there. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but they didn't specifically say. No, it's I don't hold, believe so. He made it sound like yeah, holds warm, rolling right the North. <laughs> right. Uh, the T-shirts we made. Every, the, you know, every. <laughs> uh, one could only dream. Uh, Ravensburger will be there with some cool ones. The Jaws board game, which I've heard really good things about from people. Uh, it's based on the Jaws movie. One player no. is the shark. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you are uh, they have, you have hidden movements, so players are trying to figure out where the shark is before attacking it. Kind of cool. And they're also going to be debuting the brand new Villainous expansion, uh, which comes with three brand new Disney villains. It's called Evil Comes Prepared. It includes Scar. Cartoon Scar. Car, right. <laughs> uh, Radigan. Cartoon Radigan. <laughs> and uh, Yz- Yzma, I believe is how you say her name. Mm-hmm. I forget. Esma, Yzma. From, Very popular uh, Emperor's picks. New Groove. Uh, yeah, some good ones in there. Some mm-hmm. ones that I'm interested to, to try out for sure. We've got Renegade Studios, which has, going back to what I said, direwolf related product, as well as a big thing for me. We've got Clank Expeditions, Temple of the Ape Lords. This is a, of course, new board with a new monster, a giant, I think, ape mechanical guardian for you to try and sneak out uh, with the treasure. But they also had the Power Rangers game, the Power Rangers Hero of the Grid. I think they should have some stuff there for sale. Uh, I just got the notification just before filming. My game will be arriving this week. Oh, so boy. I'll be able to take a, maybe a p- p- look at that. Maybe we'll get to play. I don't know. We have a lot already slated. <laughs> and they also have plenty of things to pick up there, including an exclusive limited. You can pre-order now which I suggest if you do want it, but uh, 
bulk and skull rangers uh, as a bit more jokey but <laughs> hilarious nonetheless so it's essential definitely oh absolutely <laughs> uh restoration games is going to be there of course and they always have some of those things i'm most excited for and this year's no exception there's new expansions for downforce and fireball island so uh, the downforce is brand new maps uh some new powers fireball island is the spider springs expansion which is a whole new section of that board and of course there's spiders now and it'll kind of connect to your current island and more chaos and dexterity action happening also it's in a regular style box not a <laughs> not one that people will complain about like me um return to dark tower this is gonna is a be there. big one i think we talked a little about yeah this is the first time i think oh well, they might have had it at some other conventions but the first time we're gonna be able to see it for demo and this is ba- uh, all their games if you don't know are based on old games and uh, this one has a giant electronic tower in the center it's a co-op title very unique type of game it'll be cool to see how they manage that Uh, another new one they're debuting is conspiracy the solomon gambit Uh, this game has players trying to move a briefcase around the board and controlling different agents and everyone is using the same set of pieces but you are trying to steer them towards your corner of the board. Hmm. That's so, interesting. yeah, and you also have some hidden information and player screens, so kind of a spy theme to that one. And then maybe their biggest release of the show. And from my description, what you're most excited about through the entire show. It could almost. be. It's it's up. It's high up on my list. It's called Unmatched, and uh, the they have a, kind of the base set there is called Battle of Legends Volume One. But our Battle of Legends might be the subtitle of Unmatched, and this is Volume 1. They have a bunch of different releases for mm-hmm. it. This is based on an old Star Wars-themed dueling game, uh, but they are reintroducing it with numerous different properties. So uh, to start off, there's stuff like from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, they have a Bruce Lee pack. I thought, isn't the, the Volume 1 thing like their own creations uh, volume one ha- it has Alice in Wonderland oh it does in it. have yeah. it okay so I thought I, it was their own so I yeah, think it's, I know some, you mentioned Bruce Lee I think you read Buffy somewhere they're doing Buffy there's also a Robin Hood yeah Robin Hood versus Bigfoot <laughs> yes and Jurassic Park has been confirmed mm-hmm. so I actually really like the idea of the Robin Hood Bigfoot because it'd be more interesting because the Jurassic Park one actually is dinosaurs versus I uh, InGen InGen thank you if the, the themes didn't match up because it's almost like we did weirder that way. You can have some really weird ones like yeah, Care Bears versus Cthulhu. <laughs> it could happen. Anyway, it's uh, it's every every uh, group has their own unique deck, but there's also minis, and you're moving around on a board. So cool dueling game. Very excited to try that one out. Smirk and Dagger Games, another sort of hidden role game, is bringing is re-releasing an old favorite of theirs. Cutthroat Caverns is getting the anniversary edition. It's going to have updated art, some more streamlined rules, and a couple other fun little changes in there. This is one of the first games we actually had, I think, in our in your collection and played yeah. with. Yeah, this so, we go way back with this one. I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are once we actually get to see it in person. Yeah, I'm excited and also very annoyed <laughs> because like, I collected all the previous expansions and this big box that holds them all. Uh, so, the Fresh Meat Locker or something like that? Yes, it's gigantic. So I'm like, this is great because the game could use some updates, but also like, I have all this stuff already, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, Spin Spin Master Games will be there. They have two new Marvel-themed games. Uh, they last year did the Hail Hydra game, uh, which uh, I think had mixed reactions, but it was one of the bigger, uh, kind of got the bigger responses of the show, I feel. And so they've got two new ones to follow up on that. Sinister Six has players playing as Spider-Man villains, and you're trying to complete heists together, but you might also try to get more money than everyone else, and sometimes Spider-Man or other Spider-Man heroes might stop you. And then there's Wakanda Forever. Everybody in this game is playing as a different tribe from Wakanda and you're actually trying to compete to become the Black Panther. Mm -hmm. So based on completing different missions, you may gain that title. So hopefully we'll get the chance to play both of these soon. Starling Games will have their Everdell expansion there. Uh, Pearl Book is a Kickstarter. I I don't remember seeing if they'll read it or, uh, I mean, not read it, sell it or not. But they'll also have Anomaly, which was a Kickstarter Pixar for us, which sounds really cool. It's pretty much a 1v all when one person plays as the Anomaly, the other people playing as other players. But it's all secret hidden movement. So, and all the cards have double effects, which, because to do things, you have to give cards to the other team. So you could be like, 
I'm going to give this to him because I don't think it should hurt us. So there's a bit, it sounds like a really fun dyna- back and forth dynamic that I would want from that kind of game. Yeah, really like those types of games. And uh, Starling Games, they do a good job. Stoneblade Entertainment is going to be there. Uh, just one we want to highlight, which is the new Shards of Infinity expansion, Shadow of Salvation. Uh, this is from the same designer as Ascension. Uh, and uh, this one, uh, while you can use it with the traditional game as kind of a, you know, just a head-to-head duel style game, it also comes with a, almost a storytelling mode where you play through a little series of events comes with a little book and you'll actually be making choices and it may differ and change depending on what you decide how the games play out which uh, sounds like really like out of left field cool idea for something that is you know a relatively traditional uh, head-to-head dueling card game Mm -hmm. so that'll be interesting to see thunderworks game uh the creators of the role player game will have cartographers a role player tale this looks like it's a roll and write action where you're making a map uh but I'm very excited just because I ever since you backed role player, I've just been in love with all the games that they have in their series. Yeah, they also just put out um, uh, un- Unlock. Yeah, it was on yeah. the set last yeah. week. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was last week. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's yeah th- that series is cool. That's got a cool art style aesthetic. So I've liked all those games so far. Now Upper Deck is going to be there. Mm-hmm. Very big one for us. They've got. Uh, three new legendary releases. So, of course, they've got a new expansion for uh, Marvel called Revelations. That one includes some longtime uh, fan favorites we've been hoping for, including uh, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Hellcat is in there, uh, a few other ones that are that I think are going to be big, uh, as well as a new expansion for their Alien Legendary Encounter series, which is Alien Covenant. Uh, you, how excited you are for that based on that title <laughs> may differ depending on who you are. And the big new Legendary release is the James Bond 007 version of the set, which I have not seen any, I don't know if they've even shown any pictures of that yet. Uh, we've seen a board. Okay. I don't think I've seen any cards, but it has like a danger track, so I think it's going to be like Buffy where it has its own unique mechanic t- tied to it. Mm-hmm. I also think the HQ is called like Q Quarters or something. So it's like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. But um, it, it definitely looks really cool. Uh, the Alien Covenant, I mean, it's more cards. I'm fine. I wasn't as big a fan of the movie. I'm also just, I think there's some other weirder alien stuff for them to pull. Like when they made their own alien th- things in the mo- last expansion, I thought that was fantastic. So I really like them to either go on their own limb because you can just make your own stuff with Alien. <laughs> it may include, maybe it'll include some other stuff too. Though. We will have to wait and see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Van Ryder Games will be there. We've got probably one of the huge ones you should definitely go check out. We probably will take a look, but we're lucky enough that Jonathan has already gotten it. Once again, <laughs> Kickstarter. Uh, Detective, City of Angels. When one person's controlling sort of the mystery you're solving in the city in LA, and the other people are the detectives. Just such a cool premise of trying to lead and you actually interact with the uh, not interrogations and stuff. I think sounds really awesome. We just haven't had a time to really set it down and play. Hopefully of, soon. Yeah, yeah, hopefully very soon. But we've also got Skull Tales Full Sail, a game about exploring like the Caribbean islands, getting treasure, becoming the most famous pirate, uh, and bringing back and telling your tales in Tortuga without getting backstabbed yourself. <laughs> and of course... Your graphic novels, big fan of. We actually did a review of the first set. Did you receive the next set? I have received he set He has two. received set two. <laughs> so if you're a Kickstarter backer, you might have gotten them already. But yeah, they'll be there now for everybody to buy. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, Those are very cool if you haven't checked those out. Uh, Skull Tales is one that I was interested in because just because it was on Kickstarter, but it's like very limited, but it's also one of these giant campaign games. Mm-hmm. So I'm like... Oh, it sounds cool and I want to play it, but oh, I know we will never play it if, if I buy that. So, uh, wait, hey, we have been doing a lot better this year. Yeah. I think we're planning <laughs> stuff out. So, never so, say never now. But limited number of those I know available right. if you're interested in the show. Uh, and, Lastly, but not leastly, uh, they always bring up the rear. They're the they're the uh, you know the complement to AEG. Yep, <laughs> it's Z-Man Games. Uh, a couple big new ones they've got is their brand new version of Love Letter. They're going to be showing off and having for sale for the first time, I believe, uh, which is reworking. Has some new roles in it. Goes up to six players. That's really the big thing for me. Yeah, yeah. new artwork as well. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, Pandemic Rapid Response. This is the brand new real time entry in the Pandemic series which uses the same name but isn't just a new reskin. It's a totally new design. Uh, You're rolling dice in real time trying to get resources and get things done. 
That is a lot of games we just went through. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there are a lot we didn't mention, partially just because we didn't want this video to go on forever. <laughs> yeah, uh, so many. Uh, what, I mean, I, we already said for me, I think Unmatched is probably my most anticipated. Of course, legendary games are always high on our lists. Uh, is there anything else that you think you're uh, most excited for to try out? Uh, at Gen oh, the problem is, like, if I didn't have any of these, it would be that detective game. Right. <laughs> but you, you have that, so I'm like, it's already, I'm going. already good. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm definitely curious about a, a, a lot of these, honestly. I the, want to know what that new deck building, the DC deck, not DC deck building game, the, uh, the Epic battle. Spell. Yes, thank you. <laughs> How that would work, because in the Epic Spellers game is combining cards to make a weird spell, so I wonder if there's going to be something similar to that mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't mention it, but I'm, I'm excited to pick up the Transformers special uh, Soundwave versus Blaster decks. Uh, hopefully they'll have enough in stock. I don't know how much the stock they'll have there. And yeah, I mean, there's so much I'm gonna like I'm gonna forget now and then after we record and be like, oh, there was that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as usual, Fantasy Flight is a big question mark. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine they're going to have the new Arkham and Mansions expansions. Uh, but beyond that, they always have some weird new crazy game that Something we, Star Wars we don't know about. I actually don't think it's going to be Star Wars since Outer Rim came out so recently. That's true, but yeah. it could be Outer Rim expansion. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that would be that would be surprising. Um, and uh, also, you know, we've still been waiting to hear from Gale Force 9 about that new Aliens game. So, right. That's so, awesome. Yeah, hopefully that will finally be there too. Uh and, and then, of course, maybe for most, I just don't know what to, to expect, is uh, that Taburu thing, <laughs> the right. electronic... Uh, That's the, the big one, which is either could just fade into the past or be something that really changes the board game landscape. I don't know. Uh, talk to us in the comments, because we're actually going to be going to Gen Con in just about a week's time. If we hadn't said that enough. <laughs> yeah, and but so maybe there's something, if you can't go, you would like us to report on and check out for you, or just let us know what thing you're looking forward to in general. That would be awesome. Talk to us in those comments sections below. What did we forget? What did we leave out? Do all that. Type it down the stairs. Yes, and of course, if you are going, say hi. Yes. We always want to say hi. <laughs> yes, say hi. But until then, I am Will. I am Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit. Catch the latest from Roll for Crit by liking and subscribing, and don't forget to support us on Patreon. Don't get analysis paralysis. Just click those buttons. Help us out.